this video we're going to convert between Celsius and Fahrenheit temperature scales on page one we'll just have a look at the um, temperature scales of each and page two we're going to come up with a quick way of just estimating in your head just if you just want a really quick idea of what the answer might be uh, then we'll solve this formula for C and convert some Fahrenheit's and we'll solve this formula for F and convert a Celsius. Okay. So let's start and we'll just have a look at the scale. And we've got Celsius here and Fahrenheit here. Okay. And it just it's just nice to have a look at it, or if you have a thermometer, have a look at it. And um, there's a couple of points that are really important on this and one would be the, the, the point at which water freezes okay which is right here and let's mark that and uh, and as you can see on the Celsius that's zero degrees okay and on the Fahrenheit that's 32 degrees right so water freezes at 0 degrees Celsius 32 degrees Fahrenheit if you remember nothing remember that if you can remember a little bit more remember this uh oh whoops don't have it but if we continue this on up um, if we kept going up at 100 degrees Celsius this is where water boils okay and you might know that that's 212 degrees Fahrenheit okay so as you can see the Celsius scale you can argue probably makes a little more sense because you know we're freezing water boiling they're pretty um, they're, they're pretty kind of intuitive uh, intuitive uh, uh, intuitive points of temperature and to, to call f water freezing zero and to call water boiling a hundred and then just uh, break up your your temperatures by one degree in between I mean that that's probably a more intuitive um, scale but either way any scale works Fahrenheit works fine of course and um, as long as we can communicate with each other that's all that matters but it is very useful to be able to convert in between so that you can communicate uh, with different countries and, and science, most, most science uses Celsius as well note that Celsius has an S there not a C so Celsius okay so um, water freezes at 0 degrees Celsius and that's 32 degrees Fahrenheit okay water boils at 100 degrees Celsius and that is 212 degrees Fahrenheit okay room temperature about 20 degrees Celsius 68 degrees Fahrenheit and um, normal body temperature would be 37 degrees Celsius or 37.5 I think sometimes anyway or 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit so just some useful useful um, temperatures to to, 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 uh, to look at and you know also like like notice how with Fahrenheit there's a lot more numbers basically I mean it, 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 it's th this is for, for between water freezing and boiling there's a hundred um, there's a hundred points on the Celsius scale um, uh, but between water freezing and boiling on the Fahrenheit scale you've got 180 right because it's 32 to 212 anyway um, so the formulas are and the first one is we'll just look at Fahrenheit so Fahrenheit we're gonna we're gonna use the actual formula and convert and everything in it but I just want you to come up with a, just a quick in your head estimate now this is not very accurate but it's it's good so you can get an actual feel for what the numbers are so Fahrenheit is 9 over 5 times Celsius plus 32 now if you look at 9 over 5 
what does that boast to? Just, just round 9 over 5, what would you get? Okay. So 9 over 5 is about what? Is it about, well it's almost 10 over 5, isn't it? What's 10 over 5? Well it's about 2, isn't it? So my point is Fahrenheit is about, now this is just a quick rounding trick for your head, 2 times C plus 32, let's just go plus 30, okay? So if you were just chatting with somebody and you wanted to quickly uh, go from Celsius to Fahrenheit, all you have to do is go twice that number plus 30. What's twice 50 plus 30, right? See, so Celsius 50 degrees, oh, 50 degrees Celsius, that's very hot, that's about as hot as it gets in the desert. What's that in Fahrenheit? 2 times 50 is 100 plus 30, 130. Right? You can do that, right? Or somebody told you it's 10 degrees Celsius. That's um, not freezing, but it's, you know, it's a cold day. What's that? 2 times 10 plus 30. 2 times 10 plus 30? So 20 plus 30, about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. About, right? So it's just a, a quick calculation for your head. If it's 80 outside, that's a, a warm day. What's that in Fahrenheit? Or hey, it's more than warm day. I'm, I'm, I now I'm getting confused. 80 degrees Celsius. You would definitely, you would definitely roast. Uh, two times 80 plus 30. Two times 80, 160 plus 30, 190. Okay. So no, it's never that hot outside. Okay. And <coughs> with the Fahrenheit, a quick conversion. If we look at this, look at how Celsius is 5 over 9 times F minus 32. So you take your F, your Fahrenheit, you subtract 32, and then you times it by 5 over 9. But just give me a, what's, what's 5 over 9 close to? 5 over 9 is almost 5 over what? It's almost 5 over, just if you just rounded that in a way. It's almost 5 over 10, isn't it? or a half, right? So my point is that if you just want to convert in your head, Celsius is about one half times F minus and 32 is, is almost 30, right? But it's just a, a quick way just so you get a, a general idea, you can do it in your head. So if somebody tells you it Fahrenheit is 100 degrees, that's the temperature outside, that's a hot day, uh, what's the Celsius equivalent? Just a quick estimate. 100, mi 100 minus 30 is 70. What half of 70? Half of 70? 35, right? Do this one. What 0 minus 30? So if the Fahrenheit degree is 0, 0 minus 30 is negative 30, right? Half of negative 30? Half of negative 30? Negative 15, right? Fahrenheit temperature is 50. What's the Celsius temperature? So, uh, not a freezing day, but a, a, a little bit cold outside. 50 minus 30 is 20. Half of 20? 10, right? So, for me, this is. I mean, this is probably the most useful page moving forward. I mean, you can find the, the conversions and you can calculate in paper, but, you know, it's pretty cool to be able to, to convert in your head, and it's pretty impressive, and a lot of people can't do that. And there is a trick for calculating these temperatures in your head, just to get a general idea, right? Okay, so moving on. We're, I want you to write this formula down. This is the, the exact formula. It's F equals 9 over 5 times C plus 32. F equals 9 over 5 times C plus 32. Okay. So we're going to solve that for C. What we want to do is we want to get C by itself. Okay. What's being done to C? C is being multiplied by 9 fifths and then 32 is being added. Okay. 
So we want to undo adding 32 and then undo multiplying by 9 fifths. Okay? So we've got to subtract 32 from both sides. Okay? And that will give us f minus 32 equals, and they make 0, of course, 9 over 5c. Okay? f minus 32 equals 9 over 5c. Now, we want to get c by itself. We're still trying to get c by itself. I'm going to move the equal sign over a bit. Sorry about that. c has been multiplied by 9 fifths. How do you undo multiplying by 9 fifths? We learned a trick called multiplying by the reciprocal because at the end of the day we want to have one c on the right hand side. So what we want to have is one, the number one c. So what we need to do is think how am I going to turn 9 fifths into 1? Okay. How am I going to turn 9 fifths into 1? To turn 9 fifths into 1 I need to multiply by 5 over 9 on both sides. And when I multiply the left I need to multiply everything on the left, not just the F, not just the negative 32, the whole thing. And that's why i got to put parentheses, because I'm multiplying all of the other side by 5 ninths. Okay? And so that gives me 5 ninths times F minus 32 equals, and this of course gives you 1C, because you see 5 times 9 it's 45, and on the bottom we have 9 times 5, which is 45. And 45 over 45c is the same thing as 1c. Or you could cross cancel, couldn't you? 5 to 5 goes once, 9 to 9 goes once. See that? So that gives you 1c or c. So c equals 5 over 9 times f minus 32. Okay? So if f was equal to 100, solve for c. Okay, so if F equals 100 degrees, solve for C, and this time we'll get the exact, not the estimate, right? So we would write down 5 over 9 times, and in place of F we put 100, okay? 100 minus 32. Okay, so now we don't do the distributive property because we can actually add like terms 100 minus 32 we can calculate that so there's no need for a distributive property we actually have a number in there and you can actually calculate inside the parentheses <laughs> so 10 minus 2 is 8 9 minus 3 is 6 so I have 5 ninths times 68 okay 5 over 9 times 68. And I don't see anything that can cross cancel, right? So, what we'll do is multiply by 5, right? Because it's like 5 over 9 times 68 over 1. So, we're going to multiply the tops and then divide by 9, okay? Does that make sense? So, it's just going to be 5 times 68 all over 9, right? So 5 times 68, 5 eighths 40, carry the 4, 5, 6 is 30, and 4, 34, right? And then divide by 9. So we get 340 over 9. And you can do long division or whatever, right? 9 into 34 goes... Um, three times, remainder seven. Nine into seventy goes eight times, seven, or uh, ba, 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 seven times, and put a point zero zero. Maybe I should do the long division. You guys probably like to do the long division way, right? Anyway, nine into three forty and put some decimal points there. 9 into 34, 3 times, 3 nines, 27, subtract. That gives 7, bring down to 0. 9 into 70, 
7 times. Six, 7 times 9, 63, subtract. That gives 7. Bring down another 0, right? 9 into 70. 7 times again. Uh, 7 times 9, 63, subtract. And bring down a 0 and keep going, right? 9 to 70, 7 times, right? So we'll stop about there and we'll round that to about the nearest tenth. So 37 point, if I rounded that to the nearest tenth, what would I get? So you would round up, see this is a 7, so that rounds up and you would get 37.8, okay? So as a decimal, it's approximately 37.8 degrees, if, so Fahrenheit is 100, so Fahrenheit is 100, Celsius is approximately 37.8 degrees. And let's compare that to our estimate. When we said that Fahrenheit was 100, we estimated Celsius to be 35. It's exactly 37.8, but 35 is a nice ballpark just for your head, just so you can think, okay, I'm in, I'm in it's around that, right? So what about this one? F is 0, solve for C. If F is 0, solve for C. Remember, C equals 5 ninths times F minus 32. Press pause and do that one by yourself, and then check the video. OK, I'll do it now. So if F is 0, hope you tried it yourself. If F is 0, that means you plug 0 in for F, and then solve that. Okay. 0 minus 32 is negative 32. Right? And so it's negative 32 over 1 times 5 over 9. So what we got to do is multiply 5 times negative 32, then divide by 9. There's nothing to cross cancel here. So let's do that. Press pause and continue from here if, if you can. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it now. Five times two is ten. Put down the zero, carry the one, five, threes is fifteen, and one is hundred and sixty. So that gives us in fact negative one sixty over nine. Right? So now we can do long division. We can do 9 into 160, and we know the answer is going to be negative, but just do 9 into 160 and give it a couple of decimal points. 9 into 16 goes one time, 1 9 is 9. Subtract, that gives 7. Bring down to 0. 9 into 70. Here we go again, 7 times, 7 9, 63. Subtract, that's 7. Bring down to 0. 9 to 70 is 7 times. 9763, subtract, and that gives um, 7, bring down a 0, 9 into 77 times, that's far enough. We're going to round that to the nearest decimal point. So at 17.77, 7 if I rounded that, that has to round up, right? So that we get 17. Point 8 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's you know a more, far more exact answer with the actual formula. When we estimated, when we said let's let Fahrenheit be zero. Oh, sorry, I forgot my negative, didn't I? Hope you forget, you remembered yours. Sorry, that's a negative, isn't it? It's a negative, 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 negative. Okay, because it's negative 160 over 9. And when we estimated, and just as well we did, we caught a mistake, we said if f is 0, we estimated to be about negative 15. And look, negative 17.8, that's pretty close. So again, I'm going back to this. If you just remember this, this would be fantastic. If you could remember how to estimate from Celsius to Fahrenheit, people will think you're really smart. They really will. And uh, that's a good thing for people to think, especially if you want to get a job or whatever. So anyway, if we solve the formula for f, Um, this is the, the Celsius equals 5 ninths times F minus 32 and we're going to solve this for F so if we want to get F by itself so write this formula down 
If we want to get f by itself, what do we do? So the trick is, you see, the first thing done to f is subtract 32. Then it's been multiplied by 5 ninths. So we actually have to undo multiplying by 5 ninths to begin with. Let me show you how that's done. Or you could probably guess. We could want a 1 there. That's the, the trick. We want 1 in front of that parenthesis. Okay? So we want to turn that 5 ninths into a 1 because we want 1 times f minus 32. I mean, that's the goal, right? Because 1 times f minus 32 is just f minus 32, and then the, the 5 ninths has gone away. Right? So how do I turn the 5 ninths into a 1? I multiply by the reciprocal. What's the reciprocal of 5 ninths? The reciprocal is 9 fifths. Okay. So I've got to multiply both sides by 9 fifths. Right? So if I do that, you see 9 into 9 goes once here and here. 5 into 5 goes once here and here. And I do indeed get 1 times f minus 32. Okay? So if I multiply both sides by 9 fifths, I get 9 fifths c equals 1 times f minus 32. Or just f minus 32. Same thing, right? I mean, you can leave the parentheses around it if you want. It doesn't matter. But the fact that there's no number outside that parenthesis means you can just ignore it because it's just a 1. 1 times f is f. 1 times negative 32 is negative 32. So the next step to get f by itself, what do we do now? We've got to get f on its own. What do we do now? Got to leave f by itself there. We need to add 32 to both sides. And that's it. Okay. So we would get 9 fifths C plus 32 equals Fahrenheit. Okay. So if we're converting 50 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit exactly, what do we do? Press pause and try that yourself. Press pause and try that yourself. Okay, I hope you pressed pause and tried it. So this time, if C is 50 degrees, we take 9 fifths, we multiply by the 50 degrees, and then we add 32, and that gives us Fahrenheit. So we're plugging this in for C, right? So we're plugging 50 in for C, right? So keep going from here if you haven't done it yet. Press pause if you need time. But you might remember that this is 50 over 1, and you can actually cross cancel this time, which is great because we don't have to do the long division stuff, right? So if you can cross cancel, 5 and a 5 goes once, and 5 and a 50 goes 10 times. 9 times 10, 90, plus 32, 122. So convert 50 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. The Fahrenheit degree equals 122 degrees, or pff, what am I doing? 122 degrees exactly, right? Or I guess you could just write that 122 degrees Fahrenheit, right?